UN Security Council to meet and discuss global AI risks. AI to replace all programmers within five years, according to Ahmad Mustak, and how AI will be used in gene editing. You're watching the AI report. Lots of exciting stuff today. Let's get into it. On July 18th, the UN Security Council will meet to discuss the potential threats of AI to global peace. Besides the usual diplomats, the meeting will host AI scientists and experts. Barbara Woodward, an ambassador from the UK, says that the situation requires a multilateral approach to managing both the huge opportunities and the risks that artificial intelligence holds for all of us, and that this is going to take a global effort. She notes that the potential benefits are huge for development programs, humanitarian aid, and peacekeeping operation and conflict prevention. But there are also a lot of risks that must be addressed. Yeah, this is good news generally, although the biggest problem is that the UN is one of those organizations that really don't have any teeth. It sounds great on paper, and it looks like it's doing something, but often their actions don't have as much effect as they should. For example, I don't really recall an instance when the UN has managed to sway a big country like the US or Russia from invading another country. On the other hand, maybe they've prevented some smaller wars through diplomacy, and to be fair, they do provide a lot of humanitarian aid. I'm not saying the UN is a useless organization, far from it. Countries should always have open dialogue in diplomacy efforts and international relations should never stop. I'm just skeptical that the UN will be able to, say, pursuing the US or China to stop pursuing dangerous AIs. Next, Japan joins the AI fight. Japan's GSR, which is a semiconductor company, has been bought by the Japan Investment Corporation, which is kind of a nationally controlled investment fund. The buyout price is $6.4 billion, which may be the biggest buyout the fund has ever made and has left people wondering if GSR is being nationalized. Okay, this is something that I just learned today. GSR has a 30% global market share in photoresists, which are special chemicals needed for circuit designs on chips, and Samsung and Intel both depend on these materials. Similar to the US, Japan has also banned exports of these technologies to China. So, the speculation here is that the company will start focusing more on producing these AI chips that everyone is raging about. I have a strange gut feeling that if Japan becomes a major player in the AI chip game, anime will somehow get even weirder. Don't ask me why. Moving on, a new report by the Grand View Research estimates that the AI market will hit $1.8 trillion by 2030, growing at a compounded annual growth rate of 37%. For comparison, the S&P 500 has had a compounded annual growth rate of around 8% in the last 30 years. That explains why so many AI stocks are red hot right now. If you think AI is a bubble and it's all just hype, you can't be bitter five years from now when your lower IQ cousin who didn't overthink this and just invested in the AI market now owns a Lambo and has a gold digger wife who ruins his life eventually. Right now, the AI market is estimated to be worth less than 200 billion. So the industry will grow more than nine times. You know what else should grow more than nine times? This channel. Hit that subscribe button, please especially if you want a Lambo and a gold digger wife who will ruin your life eventually. Next, ChatGPT disables browse with Bing because it can sometimes display content in unwanted ways. In a short update released on their blog, ChatGPT says they want to do right by content owners. The feature should be enabled once the issue is addressed. By the way, you know who probably doesn't care too much for doing right by content owners? Google. They have just updated their privacy policy, and now all data posted online is fair game for their AI models. Honestly, not only does this not surprise me, but I actually thought that this was already the case. How else were they training their models so far? Also, formally, maybe you should have privacy rights on some platforms online, and companies should respect them, but informally, the minute your piece of data gets uploaded on a server somewhere, you can practically think of it as not your piece of data anymore. It's not how the internet should be, but it is how the internet is. Don't shoot the messenger here, I'm just trying to give you a friendly warning. If you are concerned about the privacy of any of your data, your best option is to never, ever, ever post it anywhere online. 
Moving on, the CEO of Stability AI and guy who always hurts my brain when I listen to him because he's like so damn smart and eloquent and not in stock, had a great talk with Peter Diamandis. I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Go watch it if you want to feel a little stupid. That's what listening to a mod usually does to me. Anyway, great talk. I mostly agree with the stuff Emad says, and he has a very good way of expressing himself and communicating powerful ideas in a pretty clear way. And generally, I'm very careful when trying to contradict someone way smarter than me, but still, he may have a dog in this race, which is why he might be a bit too bullish on some of the timelines for how AI will develop. For example, at one point he says there will be no programmers in 5 years. The reason why I don't agree with that one particular statement is that A. Then the people who use AI to create code will be programmers by default. And maybe that's kind of what he meant. But B. I would be surprised if even in 5 years we have AIs capable of dealing with all the complexities and nuance and little intricate details required to write large amounts of interconnected custom business logic code. It's not impossible, but I still think when something in your code breaks, you will eventually need a person to go and take a look at the source code. And that's, you know, a programmer. It would be awesome if I'm right and my mod is wrong. I'm probably a massive underdog in this battle of brains, but sure, game on, Hamad. Also, he has a tendency to kind of, you know, maybe oversell things a bit. He speaks with a lot of conviction, which is why you may want to rewind some parts and think them over. In any case, great talk. Hamad is one of my favorite people in AI. Go check out this talk after you're finished here, of course, because we have a few other important things to go over. Taylor Swift fans are worried that AI might damage her career. The fans are worrying? Why? Just listen to her official music. You are the fans. The power lies within you. Still, if there's one mega popular artist that can easily be replaced by AI, it's probably Taylor Swift. Just go to ChatGPT and request it to write generic white girl breakup song lyrics and there you go. I'm pretty sure even the most diehard fans won't be able to tell the difference. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Taylor Swift is okay. I might have even sung along to some of her songs without knowing it's her songs, of course. You know what's probably not gonna be fine, however? AI extortion scams. I recently did a video on AI scams. Go check that out so that you don't fall for those, but I think I didn't cover this particular scam in depth. So, boy meets girl online, girl seduces boy, girl sends nudes and asks for boy to reciprocate, boy complies. Girl informs boy that she's not a real human being, but an AI-generated persona that just got photos of boy's most precious body regions. And now girl blackmails boy and asks to send Bitcoin, or boy's grandma will receive pics of boy in her AOL email. You can probably replace the boy and the girl in that story. Although being a man my entire life and knowing men, I think they will be much more vulnerable to this. I don't know. Honestly, I might be too old school to talk about this. Nudes never really did a lot for me. I'm pretty sure I've never really sent one myself. And I hope I don't live long enough to do it. Seeing nudes from someone is exactly the same as not being with them. Maybe even worse. If you were my younger brother and asked for my advice, I would say just ask her to come over. And also know that servers store information forever. It never gets deleted. And they often get hacked as well. But I know the kids won't listen to this. I know how big Gen Z is on not leaving the house, so at least I'll recommend not sending nudes to a person you've never met in person. And finally, Tiger is an AI model that predicts the activity of CRISPR tools. In case you're not familiar, CRISPR is a technology that's used for gene editing. This makes it easier to control gene expression, so some genes can be completely turned off, which results in the elimination of some genetic diseases, for example or used to reduce a person's vulnerability to viruses. My question here, can I use this to change my genetics so that I put on more muscle? I mean, come on, I've been hitting the gym for two years non-stop and I haven't gained an inch in my arms. Will some of these new kids that hit the gym grow like cross outs in like three weeks without breaking the sweat? Is God playing a prank on me? What's going on here? Well, if AI helps me grow my arms faster, it will be a balancing force in the universe. AI will bring more justice to the world, and that's the way it is. That was the AI report. 
every time you watch a video on this channel and don't like and subscribe, the forces of evil grow stronger. So hit those like and sub buttons in the name of justice and freedom and love. And I will see you tomorrow.